my three top pro tips on overcoming objections, a few recommended tools, and one incredible pro tip on following up. Day 33. This is the 365 Days of Multi-Level Marketing Journey to Freedom Podcast with Rome Bachelor, where Rome shares his daily journey from down and out to total financial freedom in one year, along with pro tips, tricks, strategies, and tools to help you join in on the journey. Now, here's Rome with today's Journey to Financial Freedom Podcast. Overcoming objections. Number one, right to it, say less to more people. We're not, we are not rocks. We're human beings that perspectives change. The 80-20 rule, I'm sure you're already, already aware of the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule would apply here. You want to spend 80% of your energy on the 20% that's getting you somewhere. And you want to spend 20% of your energy on the 80% that's not getting you anywhere. So again, spend 80% of your energy, resources, and time and focus on the 20% that's getting you somewhere. If you don't understand the 80-20 rule, please Google it. You might rec pick up the book 80-20 Sales and Marketing, 80-20 Sales and Marketing. I highly recommend it. It'll help you to understand why you focus in and chunk down, chunk down to the 20% and then chunk down again to the 20% of the 20% so that you can really target and narrow in on where you need to spend your energy to get the biggest result. Even Jesus spent more time with three of the 12 than the others. And he has a, a, a team that has spanned the globe and is the biggest team on earth, so to speak, right? So just given that biblical analogy, but spend 80% of your energy on the 20% that's getting you somewhere. However, that 80% that's get, not getting you anywhere, 80% of the people that's not going anywhere or conversations or prospects or team members, things can change. We're human beings, right? We, we're not rocks. We have spirits and experiences. So if you follow up, which we're going to get to that in a little bit, when those experiences, that timing changes, life changes, the perspective changes, you'll be there to save the day and things can move forward because down the road 20 years from now, when you are a legend in this industry, in this profession of network marketing, you will look back and you will find that some of your very biggest leaders, maybe your biggest leader or your biggest team, came from somebody out of the 80% that was going nowhere at first. But because you use a contact manager, before, because you follow up, because you flat out just believe in people, sometimes those 20, those 80% that's going nowhere will lead to the biggest results down the road. But we need to make money now and we need things to move forward now. And sometimes your example is what will move those 80% of your prospects or team members into the 20% because you're succeeding, you pull them to success and things change rapidly because their perspective changed when they saw you made it, right? So number one, say less to more people, shake the dust off your feet and know how to quickly sort to look for the 20% of your prospects that are going somewhere and then use a proper process to help them succeed. Use a proper process. The end result is not when they join, that's just part of the process, them joining. The end result is when they're hitting their goals and you're rewarded for helping them. That's the end result. And then stretching their belief and their dream and their vision so that they can see bigger than just themselves so their vision and goals expand so that you can continue to move forward. So, number one, be willing to shake the dust off, say less to more people, and you're not going to overcome objections with everybody, nor should you even try. Be willing to cut people loose quicker so that you can move on and spend 80% of your energy on those that's going to result in something right now and maybe forever. 
Number two is when you actually get an objection, realize that's not necessarily negativity. It usually is not. Sometimes it's just the reason that they are not going to move forward right now. Sometimes it's just simply the reason why they are not moving forward right now. And if you can understand and articulate their position, I would recommend here that this tool would be Chris Voss has never split the difference. I'm not going to try to teach it, but what you want to do is be such a good question ask, asker, such a good listener, so good at what Chris calls mirroring that you're able to get them to say, uh, uh, clarify the position until you understand it. And when they say, that's right, or exactly, then the ball moves forward and the whole dynamic changes the conversation dramatically and everything is just, you know, smooth and positive and fun, right? Because you want to have fun. However, if you're not going to read that book and you're not going to understand this fully, then here's another process. You just say, if you did, this is something you're going to apply today. It's so simple. If that wasn't the case, like uh, Rome, you know, I just don't have the time. Well, let me ask you just, you know, candidly, if you did have the time, is this something you would be willing to pursue? If you did have the time, is this something you'd be interested in pursuing? If you did have the time, would you be open to pursuing this? If you did have the time, see the hypothetical. And if they say yes, now you're in the game and you can proceed with your conversation. If they say, you know the truth, I wouldn't. Then you know that's somebody you need to shake the dust off your feet and move on. But if they say, yes, I would, now you're, you just, okay, then what you, my suggestion there is not spend any more time on that. You move on by saying, because if they say they would, you say, other than that, what else would keep you from moving forward? Is there anything else? And when they say, well, yeah, you know, I'm not quite sure if my spouse would support it. And, and then you say, well, okay, well, it, just curious. I don't know that they will or not, but if they did support this, if you were surprised and they did like it and support it, would you be at that point open to pursuing this further? If they say yes, boom, you know that's the case. Now you ask it again. Why would you keep asking for objections? Because sometimes the real objection is not the first thing or second thing they say. Sometimes the real objection is hidden by socially acceptable or ego-saving objections to get you to leave them alone so they don't have to reveal to you their tender spot, right? They're, they don't have to damage their ego by saying, I don't have the money or uh, my wife would give me a hard time and I don't want to deal with it, you know, because that can hurt their male, male ego and they don't want to admit that to you. They don't want to deal with They want you to think, you know, see them differently than that. So they, they want you to see them as the leader of their house and they don't want to admit it. So they may hide it a little bit by giving you an objection of time to cover it up. Or here's the number one object, true objection. Man, I ain't got the money. I ain't got the money. That's the number one true reason. Most people won't say that up front. They'll say, well, the timing's bad right now, but they won't get to the real truth. The real truth is probably 80 to 90% of the time, they don't have the money. That's usually the objection. So here's a thought on that. You, you, you say, if you did have the money, if you did have the money, is this something you'd be open to pursuing? If they say no, you found the truth and maybe you need to shake the dust off your feet or follow up down the road. If they say yes, then you say, well, it cost, you know, $300 to get started. You know, how far off are we? I'm curious. If they say, well, I, I can come up with, you know, $200 but I don't have three. I really don't. And it's going to really stress me out to get it. Then you realize that you're now dealing not with two, $300. You're dealing with $100. You're saying, okay, well, I've got, you've got 200. What would it, you know, now, so we're a hundred dollars off. How can we come up with a hundred bucks so that you can get started? Because obviously if you don't have 300, obviously is a good word, by the way, and naturally, 
obviously if you don't have three hundred dollars now you you know you don't want to stay in this position down the road you know uh, for things to change i mean you recognize the value of having three hundred dollars laying around that you can spend without a thought right i mean obviously naturally you do so let's solve that let's solve it and that I didn't put a lot of thought into the way I worded that, but you get the idea. The whole idea is let's make sure that in the future when you need $300, you've got it. And this is the way to do it. So you keep asking the question, is there anything else? Other than that, if you had that solved, if you did have it, is this something you would be open to pursuing? Open is sometimes a better word than interested because it, 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 it leaves it a little more relaxed. So is, if you did have the money, is this something you would be open to pursuing? If they say yes, how much do you have? And then you can find out what the difference is because then you're not dealing with a, a $300 question, you're dealing with a $100 difference. Now, what can we do? What would it take? What I, what, how can we come up with the $100 to get you started? They might have some old golf clubs that they can sell or something they can sell or don't need. They might have some money laying around they're not thinking of. And if you say $100, boom, you know, I do have $150 over here I didn't think about. And, or I do have it on my credit card, right? So they can think of a way to find it at that point. However, I do believe in following through and not following up more so. I believe in getting referrals and getting them started and not letting money be the issue. But if you get to that point in the conversation and you're feeling you're getting resistance, you want to find out what that is right away. And if it's money, you want to go ahead. You know, if there was a way to get you started without spending a dime, would you be open to that? That's another way of getting to it. And then you can get them started. And when they have someone who wants to try the product, buy the product, if they have somebody that wants to join or is getting excited, often they find the money without you having to get into a financial discussion. So that's another pro tip. Write that down. If there was a way to get you started without the money, would you be open to that? If there was a way to get you started without you spending very much time at all, would you be open to that? See, I don't need your time. And then you can get into you know, them referring you to some people and they get full credit and you do the work. And when you get results, then they'll get excited. Sometimes people want the downline committed before they work with them. I reverse that. Sometimes you need to work with people, get them results. Dexter Yeager is originally I heard this from. He's, he works with people. He gets them a result. He gives them 80% of the energy, maybe 100% of the energy at front and see how they respond. Because sometimes when you get them a result, now they start producing. Now they start getting excited. Now they start taking action. Now they find the money. Now they find the time. So get them a result and all good things occur. If they don't, those referrals go to you and you just be really thankful to them and appreciative so you don't cut them out or damage the relationship because they may join later anyway. So that's, is there anything else? Why do we say, is there anything else other than that? Is there anything else? Because the last objection is the true one. And when they finally say to you, no, there's nothing else, that's it. Then you know you've gotten the real objection out. And when you can either totally understand and articulate it, what they say exactly, or that's right. Or if you did, if that wasn't the case, would you be willing, would you be open to pursuing this? Yes. Or if we could get you started without that, is that something you'd be open to? So you might want to take notes because I went in a couple dire directions here, but the basic idea here, tip number two, is is there anything else? Other than that, is there anything else? Also, a, a bonus tip here is really and truly, for the most part, you shouldn't be answering objections to your own prospects. You really shouldn't be answering objections to your own prospects. You really should be having your upline do that because you need to be a really good connector. If you're a really good connector, then you don't have to be salesy, right? Your upline will handle that for you. All you have to do is be a great connector. We talked about that on day 15, the campfire. If you get people to the campfire, the campfire does all the work for you. So I would refer back to day 15 of this podcast. 
And the, the last, the next thing, pro tip, is chunking up. Chunking up. What do I mean by that? Chunking up is, instead of com being combative about their specifics of their objection, instead of saying, man, the, I wouldn't let my wife tell me what to do, instead of arguing it, then the resistance goes up and they're going to strengthen their position and argue for it because you're challenging their ego. Instead of saying, man, if I didn't have, you ain't got $300, man, that's crazy. That, now you're making them feel bad and they're going to respond negatively. You don't want to deal with the surface ever. You don't want to deal with the specifics. See, in neuro-linguistic programming or NLP, in psychology, they call this chunking down. You're going down to the specific front line. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is do the opposite. You want to chunk up to the big picture. Never combat them on their specific point of resistance. Never combat them on their specific point of resistance. This is something worth taking notes on, but you want to not combat at all. You just want to bring it back to the big picture so they can see the perspective properly. And what that is, is instead of focusing on the ant in the driveway, you need to paint the image of the whole entire yard and the home the inside of the home, the beauty of the home, the, 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 the nice neighborhood that you're in, right? You need to bring it back to the big picture. You don't have to overcome the objection. Sometimes all you have to do is bring the, the thoughts, the imagination, bring the, bring, go back to the topic or address the topic of the big picture and the objection becomes a teeny tiny ant versus the big picture itself, because it's not. An objection is just a teeny tiny ant holding them back from a whole new life of freedom, of less stress, of joy, of prosperity, of security for them and their family, main, in many cases for generations. You are just making a huge impact. This is called you know, making a mountain out of a molehill, an objection, and you need to bring it back to the mountain instead of the molehill. Like, and here's a way to do that. So, man, you know, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, but let me tell you what I found out, man. I feel felt found. I didn't have the money either at first. But, man, I met some people that had tried businesses like this and had never succeeded before. But this team, this company, does it differently. This product is so loved when people try it that they respond differently. And it's not selling, it's so simple, it's so fun, people thank you, it's so positive. And I've seen so many people leave their jobs that they hated or stay in their jobs but now have so no financial stress, they're relaxed, they're having great Christmases, they're taking great vacations, they've moved to better neighborhoods, they're driving better cars, they have a much more secure retirement. And they're, you know, their life is, is so much more joyous and rewarding and fulfilling, and they're making a difference for other people. When I saw that, I realized I had to find a way to get the money, man. And now, as a result, you know, I've got extra money laying around, whereas before I was always tight and stressed out. So would it make sense for you to at least meet a few of these other people I was mentioning before? And then it lets you make your own mind up because it's, it's not something I need your money to get started, man. I don't need your time to get started. We have a, a program for that. We have a program for that. Are you open to that? If there was a way to address that, would you be open to it? So I've thrown out a lot of tidbits here. Uh, we have a program for that, feel felt found. If there was a way, you know, would it be okay if I introduced you to some people so you can make your own mind up? Because this is not, there's not a deadline here. You know, this, this is, this is something that's relaxed. This is fun. This is rewarding. I'm here to help you. If that's your approach, you're going to get further than trying to argue the point of their actual objection, which may not even be the actual objection. Again, you, you can keep going and say, is there anything else other than that? If you did have the money, would you pursue it? Sometimes you don't have to answer. You just have to understand it and move past it and get it said so they feel like they said that now 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 that's out of the way if you chunk up to the big picture 
it solves a lot of things for you. There is some key wordings. Again, go back and listen to this podcast again and take some notes. All these things will make a difference. And if you do them, if you write them down and you practice them and then they become second nature, follow up and overcoming objections will become second nature and easy for you because you don't have to even know all this for it to go smooth. Just some of it make a huge difference. The more you know, the better you're prepared. You don't need all these approaches. You might need one or two to make a huge difference. And the last thought I have here is, again, be willing, not always feel okay with letting people go. I remember when I was young, I overcame that because I called the, the former two-term governor at the time. He was the former two-term governor. He went back to practicing law and I was a teenager in my first network marketing company, and I located his home phone number and I called him at home. And I called him, we had a thing called phone team. And I called him and I talked to him and I said, Jim, I'm in business with some people out of Raleigh and you know, we're expanding a venture. We're in business with some Fortune 500 companies. I can't, I know who you are, obviously. I can't promise you anything though because we have to meet, you know, I like to look at people eyeball to eyeball and I don't discuss my business at length over the phone. Would you be open to taking a look at what we're doing? Well, you can mail me something in the mail. I said, Jim, I'm sorry. I respect you. Obviously, I know who you are and I know, you know, your achievements and and your credentials, but I have never met you face to face and I would need to do that before uh, cheapening my business and mailing you something. Well, I don't do business that way, he said. So I said, well, then you lose, buddy. And I hung up on him. What that did was that gave me confidence because I disconnected. I flushed, as we used to call it. I flushed and rejected the former two-term governor of the state. I flushed and rejected the former two-term governor of the state as a teenager with 10 people in my group. Talk about a confidence boost that gave me posture and I was no longer ever going to beg any one prospect to join. I will be willing to spend a little energy to help somebody who is who is sincere or who seems sincere to overcome objections. But I will never, ever, ever spend too much energy, time or resources or too much value on any one person because, you know, that six degrees of separation Everyone is not that distant from uh, in, a, in a chain of referrals from millions of people, from millions of people. I don't need any one person. I just need to get good at saying less to more people and helping people get started. And I knew that all my dreams would come true. So my last point today is a really great one on follow up, because sometimes people, you know, obviously recruiting is not an event, it's a process. And it may be the eighth phone call, it may be the sixth meeting, it may be the third phone call, the third meeting when they actually commit to either joining or trying your product. So that's okay. But even after that point, there's a thing called follow up with them to help get them started. And when they're not ready yet, it could be the 27th phone call, right? The 20 eighth follow-up or the 50th follow-up when some of your best people join. I could tell stories there. I know of a lady that went on to become a million dollar a year earner and she sponsored a guy who came on to be uh, uh, over $700,000 a year earner after following up with him for something like five years. She would follow up every six weeks for five years and the timing became right and this gentleman became one of the top earners in the company, almost making a million dollars a year and helped her to reach her goals and became one of her biggest organizations because she followed up every six weeks for five years in a gentle manner. See, this is, here's the tip. You want to drip with permission, drip with permission. The last tip today is on follow up drip with permission. And what does that mean? A drip is something gentle. It doesn't hurt. It's not harsh. It's not forceful. It's relaxed. It's very gentle, a drip. And you want to do it with permission because if you follow up without permission, that's salesy. 
that's pushy, that's not well received. The whole goal is to not be salesy and to lower resistance. How do you do that? You do that by getting permission to follow up. Permission to follow up is key. You see that today is really almost two podcast episodes in one because now we're talking about follow up. But that follow up is key because they say the fortunes in the follow up because sometimes your best people join down the road if you stay in touch because it's a business not only of products, services, making money, but it's also a business of relationships. And sometimes people will not commit to a product or company. Usually they commit first to an idea and to, to, to a person that believes in them. And then they commit and fall in love with the company, the products, the services, the dream, and them their own believing in their own self, right? So sometimes it's believing in you first. And that credibility often is built by consistent follow-up. That means they know you mean it and you're solid so that they can believe in following you because you are a rock, right? You are a rock. And sometimes we do change companies. Sometimes things change. Sometimes something don't allow with, align with our values. And that's a different story and that's okay. But when you find your home, when you find it, when you find what sits right for you, following up forever and ever and ever. You might have changed companies, but because you followed up, they believe in you and they'll follow you in whatever company because you believe in them and you have established credibility and they believe in you. So simply as this, they say they, they're not interested or they're not gonna join right now. You say, would it be okay if? That's fine, I understand this isn't a fit for you right now and that's totally fine and it may never be but with permission with your permission would it be okay if I check in with you once in a while I promise not to bug you but once in a while I'll let you know how it's going and maybe give you a few updates and check in and see how you're doing if they say yes to that a lot of wonderful psychological things just occurred number one a relationship has just really begun number two it gives you the opportunity to follow up without resistance. And number three, they had to justify subconsciously that maybe I might be interested at some point because I told him to follow up with me. <laughs> without them realizing it yet, they just took a step forward. So an action step by just saying yes to allowing you to get back with them. Then depending on the person, the relationship, you might follow up. If they seem like they're going to join real soon, you might follow up every week or two. If, if you feel like it's a you don't know when, you might follow up like the lady I told you about who followed up every six weeks, every six weeks. Or you might be somebody you followed with every six months for years. Or it might be the third follow up that something changes in their life and they begin the process of locking arms with you and, and, and proceeding forward, doing something great. So follow up as a drip, very gentle with permission. And my last pro tip on follow up, this is a huge one, never follow up with the same modality too many times in a row. Don't just call them three times in a row. Don't just take the easy way out and only text them three times in a row but reach out with different, in different ways. You might send them a postcard on a trip that you win and say, hey, we're having a great time. We, we won this trip or we're taking this trip. Thought about you and thought this somewhere that you would appreciate going. You know, wish you were, you know, wish you could have been with us maybe at some point in the future, All right? That's a postcard, a handwritten letter. Hey man, I was just thinking about you. I want to let you know about this new product. I just slipped in a brochure here. Something that you, you might know somebody that might be interested in this. And just thinking about you, appreciate you. How's you know, when we speak next, look forward to hearing how things are going with you. Don't make it just about you, also make it about what's going on with them. That's another key. It might be a, a Facebook message. My point, it might be a, a product sample in the mail or dropping it off to them to say hello face to face again. Mix it up. You might do three phone, two or three phone calls in a row, but then do something different. Then do something different. I would use the phone as the most often or the most common or definitely part of it 
but n don't just rely on texting and phone calls. Definitely, texting can be so ignored, and until there's some degree of relationship, texting is less effective. In the beginning, it just gets dismissed. So please don't set the tone that you're only going to text them. Make the first follow-up a, 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 a thank you a card for uh, being open to, you know, a potential lifetime uh, partnership or, or whatever, or a relation, business relationship. Or make the first follow-up, you know, an email. Make it something more than a text message. And then, then, then go to a phone call. How about birthday cards? That's very classy. So you might use a contact manager and load in birthdays so that you can remember everybody's birthday. And you can follow up and keep up with your follow-ups. So that's today's day 33. This one was quite rich with information. You might go back and take notes. But that's overcoming objections and some great tips on follow-up as well as a few books recommended 80-20 sales and marketing and Chris Voss's Never Split the Difference. This is day 33 until our next episode. This is Rome Batchelor, and I invite you to join me on the journey to your life. Thank you for sharing today's 365 Days of MLM to Freedom podcast. And remember to email your questions and comments directly to Rome at 365 Days of MLM at gmail.com. And until next time, we want to encourage you to join in on the journey.